subject of justice and integrity so important for our church leaders today? Well, I think I'd say, really repeating what I've heard again and again through this evening, that the reason that we pursue justice is because God is a God of justice. And I love the way in the book, uh, Simon and Justin, start with God. It's so easy, isn't it, to start with other things, to start with ourselves, to start with an agenda, to start with a cause, but actually we're called back to the heart of God. So it's about motivation. What is the motivation for my pursuing justice? Is it because it will make me look good? Is it because it's what my friends are doing? Is it because it's a trendy thing? Or is it because I serve a God who calls me to uh, echo his justice in the world? So somebody once said that we're a very mixed bag of motivations. The, The dividing line between good and evil is not between people, it's within people. So it's thinking, how do I allow God to redeem every part of me so I reflect him in the world? Amazing. How about you, Paul? Well, uh, church leaders have power because we're given responsibility Mm. and we're given trust by people. And we see so many examples of where power is misused and it goes horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we really need to do when we look at those is ask questions about the culture that allowed that to happen or made that possible. And I think um, leadership has been part of being in the church for years, but probably has only really been focused on or taught in the last few decades. Mm. So a lot of church leaders, we've gone out and we've learned the skills um, without really allowing it to be an inside-out job. The, one of the things I loved about the book is it really takes us into the soul of leadership. Wow. That mm. this, As Emma was saying, it, it begins with God and then it comes out of our relationship with God. Mm so that we can actually express a leadership that's not going to be um, abusive or even just a degree or two off Mm -hmm. what it should be. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So what do you see, Paul, uh, as the key challenges to demonstrating this just leadership today? I mean, there are so many challenges. It's (laughs) it's not an easy context in which to lead. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think one of the things about our society is that... um, The culture that we live in uh, celebrates significance and it celebrates a certain type of success. Mm. And because we're human beings so often formed more by the culture than we are by our relationship with God, Mm. we long for that as leaders. Mm. So looking at the dark side of our soul, the desire to be noticed, the desire to be seen, so often what happens is that as leaders, we, we use people to build platforms and ministries rather than build ministries and platforms to build people. Mm. Um, You know, we need to be always um, expressing the love of God for others. And I loved what I had in the book and and what we heard from the the, uh, episode that we just watched Mm -hmm. about generous leadership, the the giving away of your power, the preferring of others. Mm. How about you, Bishop Hannah? I wonder if one of the real challenges that we have to face, possibly in the church most of all, is what to do with our failures and what to do when we've got it wrong, because we have got it wrong spectacularly as a church throughout history. And I think we're learning how to be more honest, um, how to say sorry, how to say we want to learn, we want to listen. There's a great phrase in the book that is, are you prepared to ruthlessly listen? Am I prepared to sit with the people who've been victims of abuse, uh, people who've been at the wrong end of injustice, and ruthlessly listen to their perspective and what they say in order that I may learn and be changed? So I think that's one of the real challenges because that's a difficult place to be. Mm. And the temptation is to make our excuses and leave. Mm. But actually that's the space that God calls us to be in, to face up to where we've got it wrong and to allow his redemption to come in. Yeah. So lastly, how might we all play our part in making just leadership a reality across the church? I think probably the clue in what you've just said is all, (laughs) because we can't change the world on our own, and we certainly can't address uh, abusive systems on our own. We need each other. Mm -hmm. We need, so whether you're the leader of your home group or whether you're the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, we need each other to to make change in God's world. So we must do this together. I love the way the the book is really practical. It Mm -hmm. gives you some really practical pointers at the end of each chapter. So one of the things for me is being challenged about a culture of deference. Mm. 
Mm. And, you know, where as, am I as a bishop? You know, bishops like to dress up in fancy clothes and <laughs> do all sorts of weird things. So how day by day do I challenge that culture that puts one person over another? Mm. And I think the other thing is to pray. Uh, mm. Just pray that God would uh, break our hearts for the things that break his heart mm. so that we'd be following where he wants to lead mm. us. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And please stay where you are because we are now going to have a Q&A panel join us on stage. And um, this is where your questions uh, can be answered. So I'm going to shift along. Give them a round of applause as they uh, come up to the stage. Fantastic. Okay, so... Do we have any questions, first of all, from the floor this evening? Um, in chapter four, you tell an amusing story about your wife and an incident in a pub. <laughs> what would you do differently with hindsight? You may have to explain the story for those that haven't got that far yet. Yeah, uh, can I just say, I distinctly feel that I've been set up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, um, what would I learn? Um, clearly, my, my perception of, uh, of events was, was different to that of my, my wonderful wife. Um, and in, in fairness, uh, my reflections in the book are um, that, that I probably was too quick to get myself out of a tricky situation. And I should have thought more about those that I was with. We talked a lot about togetherness already this evening. Um, so look, um, just for my wife's benefit, um, I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Any more from the floor, Joe? We have one here. How does this book directly address dealing with being the receipt of injustice and leadership. Anybody want to answer that? I think the author should have first dibs. <laughs> <laughs> Simon? So I think, um, if I understand the question right, it's kind of, you know, if you're the, in the receipt of injustice, then how do you respond and how can you um, uh, respond in that situation. And I think um, there's a role for all of us as leaders to create the environments where it's easy for people to come forward and to be mm. believed. Mm. So I think a really important part of just leadership is actually when someone comes and tells you that they've been the recipient of injustice, your default behavior should be to believe them. Mm. Yeah. And that has not always been the case, sadly, for us. There are far too many situations where people have actually got the courage, and in fact, we talked to one person in, in episode four on, on the series who was a, a survivor of church abuse, who, who got the courage to, to, to stand up and say, I've been abused in this church, and she wasn't believed. Mm -hmm. And that just compounds the injustice for people. So the big challenge for us is how do we create those environments where people can come forward, they can say what's happening to them, and our default position is to believe them and to listen to them and to hear them um, first. And I think that's a massive challenge for yeah. us. Thank you. Any more, Joe? We have one from Mandy Marshall, who has been so far on the tube and on the bus while she's been following <laughs> the event tonight. Uh, Mandy said, at the start, Simon mentioned race, gender, equality, etc., and their importance, and then said, but character systems and values are important. I'm keenly aware that a but in that sentence can be used to place a hierarchy of importance. Does Simon agree that there is no but, rather an and, as in all of it is required to bring about just leadership? Yes, and, yes. <laughs> uh, Ma Mandy, you're right, you're absolutely right, there is no hierarchy in that, so poor choice of words, it is, it is an and. I think um, tackling uh, the causes of injustice and tackling our character, Danielle talked about that, the outward and the inward. Um, we're not saying that 
Um, we fight, we don't fight the just causes, we just look at our character, we're saying actually it's a both and. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there is a readdressing of the balance so that we get the character bit right as well as the outward bit right mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, an and, yeah. Fantastic. Any more, Joe? So we have Martin Thomas has said he's already appreciating the honesty written about in Just Leadership and the TV clips being shared. Could the panel unpack how they balance the desire to be open and vulnerable leaders whilst also being wise, especially in protecting themselves and their families? Great question. Who would like to take that? I'll have a go. Um, I think it's a really key question. I, I find, for example, that there is a real value in vulnerability as a leader, um, but there's there's a time and a place. So, you know, if you're going to have brain surgery, uh, you don't really want the surgeon to tell you that they're really nervous about the operation. That's not going to inspire <laughs> confidence. So I, I think vulnerability should, your sharing of that publicly, that you've always got to put the needs of those people that you're sharing with ahead of your need for affirmation and confirmation. Um, but there are people that we need to be vulnerable with for accountability's sake. And that balance is really hard to find. But um, yeah, that, that, that's my two pennies worth. I mean, I'd, I'd add to that that you know there are, there's appropriate vulnerability and appropriate vulnerability with with the right people. And one of the things we need as leaders is is people around us with whom we can be vulnerable and with whom we can share. And my second thing would be that actually um, that never share in public something that you haven't processed privately. So again, we think vulnerability is, you know, maybe getting up on a stage and talking about something you're going through. Well, actually, that's inappropriate vulnerability. It's the processing privately that gets you to a place to be able to say, this is impacting me, it's impacting my family. And I think sometimes we get that mm -hmm. wrong as well. Yeah. Yeah. Any more, Joe? We've got a question from Rick, who's um, joining us from Pittsburgh tonight. And he asks, what are some specific suggestions for practically revealing and then dealing with injustice in our hearts? <laughs> well, in, if, it's, if the question is in our own hearts, then I, I think um, it's being willing to ask the hard questions of ourselves. Mm. Um, and sometimes the best way of doing that, in my experience, is to um, let other people ask those questions to us. Um, which is really challenging because uh, all the time we have, a, we have a mask that we wear, not just to present to others, but actually to present to ourselves. Um, and finding a place where you're safe enough to take that mask off and let people question the deep things in our hearts is really important. Um, so I think um, looking at that shadow, uh, and then as Emma said earlier, ruthlessly listening to what others might be saying, um, to what God is saying to us above everything else and saying what's the truth in that you know where is where, where's there something that I want to defend myself against I think one of, one of the things that we that I think are, is really important is, is thinking about values uh, we have at the GLM we have personal values which you, uh, we use the word pie it's, it's a passion about what we do integrity um, and the, uh, the E is empathy, and the empathy is so important yeah. that before we start to dive in to, to give answers, before we start to dive in to analyse things, it's the empathy, understanding the world from, from, from their shoes, from their perspective, from where they're coming from. And I think that speaks into vulnerability too, yeah. that if we can understand when people come, if, if somebody comes to me and says, well, that's a silly idea, well, I, I want to understand why they think it's a silly idea rather than saying, well, you're an idiot for calling it a silly idea. We need to start to engage with people rather than just confronting with people, I think. Great. Anyone else want to add to that? I think just to say maybe that it's about, I really like the way in the book it talks about understanding your own story because I think it's only when you, and you talked about your story very powerfully in the video, it's only when you begin to unpack that and think, well, where was God in that story, that you can understand your motivations, you know, the, the, good, the good ones and the bad ones, and sift those and allow the Holy Spirit to come and shine light on that. So we shouldn't be afraid to, to look at our own story and see what results it has today. 
I've, I've said a number of times, I think, on, on interviews the last couple of weeks, that if someone was to give me a million pounds, and if there's anybody out there who'd like to do that, then I'll give you my details later. Um, I'd spend it in giving therapy to anyone who wanted to become a vicar, a church leader, or a CEO <laughs> um, before they started. Yeah. Yeah. Because actually there's a sense of, of dealing with our shadow. And for me, it was rejection. Um, not from my parents, but actually from bullying as a, as a teenager that um, actually brought real rejection into my life that actually people had to point when I was leading Samaritan's Purse out to me mm. that actually that rejection was starting to show and it was starting to show in the way that I was um, behaving. So I think there, there is an inner work in our hearts and I think as, as leaders we need to say it's okay to go for therapy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, gentlemen, you know, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to go and get prayer ministry. I think as leaders, we need to model that. I remember, you know, spending years in my church. My church leaders are here tonight, so I need to be careful. But years in my church, not wanting to go forward for prayer ministry because I thought everybody would be looking at me and thinking, oh, he's a leader. Why does he need Mm. prayer ministry and there's kind of a, a sense that we, we need to normalize that we need to normalize the dealing with our mm. our baggage with our rubbish because um, we all have it and we're all wounded and we're all broken and if you're a leader you're just a broken person with a job title I mean you just kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, who needs healing and who needs yeah. restoration and that's so important I think the reality is, isn't it, that we, we talk about um, needing courage to step into difficult situations and to speak up about injustices that we see around us. The reality also is that we need courage to look within ourselves, yeah. to, 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 to challenge those things that, that, that make us up, as Danielle was, was talking about earlier on. Um, and I love the, um, the quote that we have in the book from C.S. Lewis, um, which almost dares us to stay on our knees just a little bit longer to hear what God is saying to us. Mm -hmm. And if we reflect on the words of the psalmist, who says, search me and know me, O oh mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. This is what it's about. We need to fully understand ourselves so much better because for many leaders, the principal reason why they have fallen, struggled, had difficulties or caused harm to others is because of their own insecurities, their own weaknesses, their yes. own dark sides that they have not been sufficiently courageous enough to challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Any more questions, Joe? We have another one um, from the online audience. Once we create the space for great, challenging, and sometimes difficult conversations, what are some of the next steps once we recognize there are problems that need action? <laughs> I, th I think part of the answer might be in the question, mm -hmm. um, and that is that, yes, we need to make space to listen. Um, we need to um, invite people to challenge us and to raise the difficult issues. But listening and then speaking up are great, but they're not enough. Um, we, we have to see those as the first steps to our action that we take. Mm -hmm. So actually... Um, the actions that the people see support this sense of having given them space to share with us. Because if they don't go hand in hand, then actually the words are largely empty. Um, so action is so, so necessary. And you hear it time and time again from um, victims and survivors of abuse uh, in a variety of contexts, but particularly the church. Yes, I think I've been listened to. Yes, I've been invited into the room, but I'm not seeing action or change. Mm. That speaks volumes. Yeah. Do we have time for one more, Joe? Try and squeeze this one in quickly. For many organizations, the Christian basis for striving for just leadership is itself a barrier. How do we sensitively share our insight? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> for many organizations, the Christian basis for striving for just leadership is itself a barrier. How do we sensitively share our insight? Sounds like that's a great question. 
<laughs> Answers on a postcard, please. I think, I think what I hear in the question is um, an ambivalence about striving and, and passion. Um, and and maybe, maybe that kind of awareness that perhaps when we do those sorts of things, um, there's always a danger of us tipping over from God's righteous anger into our own human anger and our own human agendas. Um, but I, I would say that we just have to go for it. You know, so often the enemy stops us from doing what we should do because he makes us think that we might not be doing it with 100% purity. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, as far as we can bow on, uh, ourselves before God and say, Lord, make me pure, we're never actually going to be pure in this life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we catch something at the heart of God, he only has imperfect tools to, lo to use. I think we should go for it. Mm. Yeah, and it kind of kind of resonates with what Danielle was saying about uh, humility being a, a right understanding of who we are, mm. a right understanding of ourselves created in God's image, um, but having the humility, but also the courage to go for it mm. as well, recognizing that we're broken and not mm. being, not procrastinating, but getting on and doing the change as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for your wisdom this evening. You can take your seats now. Give them a round of applause. Apart from you, Roger. <laughs> Lovely. So I've asked Roger to stay here. And thank you for being here this evening, Roger. I know you've had lots to do with behind <laughs> the scenes. And uh, Roger is the CEO of the Global Leadership Network. And he's been working alongside Simon and Justin for some time. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions, particularly about this Zoom conversation that we're going to be having every week after the TBN show. So this idea around community and content, could you explain to us what that is exactly? I'll do my best. The, <laughs> what, what I think we're experiencing in the world today is... A, is is that content is no longer scarce. We can consume content, content from all over the place. It used to be 15, 20, 30 years ago, it was difficult to get hold of good content. Now, there's loads of content, but what are you gonna do about it? I think that's the key question, is that what are we gonna do differently because of this content we've just consumed? So what we're really excited, I, I, I'm not sure whether this is a brilliant idea or a balmy idea, <laughs> But uh, the, uh, what we're going to do is we get af immediately after the, the, uh, the TBN ev event, we're going to have a live webinar where you can start to ask some questions, rather as we have tonight, of the authors and of the panellists to really say, what do you mean by that? And what do you mean about this other thing? And what we want to do is really we want to process this content together. So it's community around content. The content is, is brilliant. The, it's really timely and really, really important for our time. What are we going to do about it? That's what I want us to come out of the end of the webinar answering the question, so what? So what am I going to do differently because of what I've been listening to tonight? I think that's really key, really, really good idea. Um, so after, the, after every episode, there'll be an opportunity to get stuck in, to figure out what your action points are based on the episode you've just watched, and actually create some community around the TV series. Exactly that. Yeah, let, let's, con let's consume the content together. Let's, let's ask Simon and, and Justin, what do they mean about this bit in the book? What do they mean about that bit in the book? Maybe some of the, some of the guests have brought out some ideas that we want to explore further. Yeah, incredible. Well, thank you so much for your in involvement. And um, yeah, I hope that we can all kind of join that conversation with you and make, well, take some positive action based on what we've watched and what we've consumed. Brilliant. Thank Thanks, you. Roger. Thank you. All right. So now I'm going to welcome to the stage Joe, who was feeding us those questions. Joe, can you join us? Give her a round of applause. <laughs> So Joe is the representative this evening from SPCK who have kindly published the book Just Leadership. I'm guessing that you're very proud of Simon and Justin this evening. Uh, absolutely. It's <laughs> 
so amazing when you get to this day for uh, for the authors, for the publisher, for everybody involved. You know, there's a there's a lot of people here tonight. I know who know what it takes to get a book from conception to finally in the hands of the people that really need to take that message. And it's fantastic to be here. We weren't sure whether this would be real people in front of us or just all virtual when we started talking about it. But it's amazing for this day to come. Great stuff. So why did you guys at SPCK decide that this was an important book for now? Well, I think there's been a lot said already this evening about the fact that, you know, there are messages out there that we have to listen to. You know, there are things that the church is saying, there are things that the communities that we're in are saying. And as a publisher, we listen, you know, we should be constantly listening to what is being said, what is being asked, and finding great content to support and help and answer those questions. And that's exactly what Just Leadership does. You know, right now, there are questions out there that churches, that individuals are asking. And this is a book and you can get it for £9 tonight or 2 for Ooh. 15 um, from the um, just after the event. Or one of the questions asked was, can you get it digitally? Yes, there is an e-book available as well if you want the digital copy. Um, and from all good bookshops as well, lots of um, Amazon have now got more stock. Um, but this is a book that answers that question. It's a book that church leaders and anybody who's involved in leadership needs to get hold of and read so we can build that fence. I am a big Audible fan. Is it available on Audible? We do have an audio book coming <laughs> soon. Yes. So yes, you will be able to hear the guys do, you know, really do this justice as an audio book. Fantastic. Okay, so you've heard it from Joe herself. We can get our copies tonight for nine pounds, two for fifteen. Yeah, that's right. And signed copies are available yes, this evening. There will evening. be a signing of any copies that are purchased tonight. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Joe. So we are going to end this evening with a really lovely um, opportunity just to worship God. And we have uh, Pete and Nikki Sims from Skylark International who are going to lead us in their justice songs. I think that's very apt this evening. We're going to go out with a bow. We're going to worship God together. And uh, thank you so much, guys. When you're ready, you can take the stage.
Wow. Thank you so much, guys. That was beautiful. Wasn't it lovely to hear live music? Ah, oh, gorgeous. Thank you. Can we find that song anywhere online or? Yeah, you can find it at our website, peternickysims.com. Hey, okay. So make sure you download that later. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I just wanted to invite the authors up one last time just to say their, the closing words. Um, everyone had a good time. Brilliant. Have you guys you don't, you don't had a good time? Sure. I, yeah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> the men of the moment, anything you want to say to end this evening? Uh, just a massive thank you to everybody who's involved. Um, there's so much generosity here. So Paul, um, All Saints Woodford Wells, your team, Natalie, Bob, um, Libby, Ken, everybody who's been involved, absolutely stunning today for us. Thank you so much. The tech that goes on, absolutely incredible. Um, uh, TBN, Global Leadership Network, SPCK 318, Forge Leadership. Uh, <laughs> just goes on and just models the kind of collaboration that we're seeking uh, to find and see. So thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who's joined in online as well. I saw La Paz, um, Pittsburgh, uh, people in Australia as well. So hi Incredible. to you guys in the middle of the night or the early morning. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for writing the book. Thank you for giving us this gift that we can learn from. You know, I hope that this is a revolution of the heart for all of us, that we can really take on these messages and really transform the places that we lead. So without further ado, we're going to say goodbye to our online community this evening. Thank you so much for watching. And for all of you who are fortunate enough to be here in person, we have a lovely drinks reception for you in the atrium. So please don't rush off. Please spend some time connecting. And as you know, we all know we're here to buy and support the book. So please do so. And thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, safe travels. My name's Amy Oyoung and I'm delighted to introduce this book, Just Leadership, putting integrity and justice at the heart of how you lead. If you're a leader, you need to get hold of this book. These questions of integrity and justice are coming upon us like a flood in every area of life and leadership. And as Christians, it's time to be equipped. It's time to stand up in integrity and to work for justice together. So please do get a hold of this book, Just Leadership, I highly recommend it.
Hi, I'm Danielle Strickland and I'm endorsing, I'm excited about the new book, Just Leadership. Uh, it has come at just the right time for us to help it reimagine what it would look like to live out of fullness and in right relationship. What a difference we could make if we led like this. I highly recommend you the book, Just Leadership. Hi, it's Patrick Regan here from Kintsugi Hope, and I want to recommend this book to you, Just Leadership, putting integrity and justice in the heart of how you lead. It is practical, it is full of wisdom, there are some gold nuggets in here around uh, not just how you lead, but the culture of leadership as well. And uh, so if you're involved in any type of leadership, church leadership, business leadership, um, even leading in your community, I can thoroughly recommend this book, Just Leadership. My name's Amy Oyoung and I'm delighted to introduce this book, Just Leadership, putting integrity and justice at the heart of how you lead. If you're a leader, you need to get hold of this book. These questions of integrity and justice are coming upon us like a flood in every area of life and leadership. And as Christians, it's time to be equipped. It's time to stand up in integrity and to work for justice together. So please do get a hold of this book, Just Leadership, I highly recommend it.
Hi, I'm Danielle Strickland, and I'm endorsing, I'm excited about the new book, Just Leadership. Uh, it has come at just the right time for us to help it reimagine what it would look like to live out of fullness and in right relationship. What a difference we could make if we led like this. I highly recommend you the book, Just Leadership. Hi, it's Patrick Regan here from Kintsugi Hope, and I want to recommend this book to you, Just Leadership, putting integrity and justice in the heart of how you lead. It is practical, it is full of wisdom. There are some gold nuggets in here around uh, not just how you lead, but the culture of leadership as well. And uh, so if you're involved in any type of leadership, church leadership, business leadership, um, even leading in your community, I can thoroughly recommend this book, Just Leadership.
My name's Amy O'Hearing and I'm delighted to introduce this book, Just Leadership, Putting Integrity and Justice at the Heart of How You Lead. If you're a leader, you need to get hold of this book. These questions of integrity and justice are coming upon us like a flood in every area of life and leadership. And as Christians, it's time to be equipped. It's time to stand up in integrity and to work for justice together. So please do get a hold of this book, Just Leadership, I highly recommend it. Hi, I'm Danielle Strickland and I'm endorsing, I'm excited about the new book, Just Leadership. Uh, it has come at just the right time for us to help it reimagine what it would look like to live out of wholeness and in right relationship. What a difference we could make if we led like this. I highly recommend to you the book, Just Leadership. Hi, it's Patrick Regan here from Kintsugi Hope, and I want to recommend this book to you, Just Leadership, Putting Integrity and Justice in the Heart of How You Lead. It is practical, it is full of wisdom, there are some gold nuggets in here around uh, not just how you lead, but the culture of leadership as well. And uh, so if you're involved in any type of leadership, church leadership, business leadership, um, even leading in your community, I can thoroughly recommend this book, Just Leadership.